All right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome, everybody. All right. Let's get this all settled up, and uh, we're gonna do the <laughs> the greasy plugs in the beginning. I try to do them at the end as well. Uh, but for those of you watching the recorded version, um, we talked about this uh, last week when we we're working on the Gloomhaven chibis. What I want to do, uh, I, I gotta first say thank you to everybody that's uh, supported me with those prints. It's been it's been great, and because of that, I definitely want to start making sure I'm making time for the chibi stuff. And I know there's Etsy's, I feel like I have a whole different audience on Etsy than here on YouTube and uh, other places. And uh, if you are watching from there, thank you. Uh, and if you're not, uh, hopefully you'll just enjoy the artwork anyway. But uh, I want to keep populating the store. And I'll, I'll show you on the screen here when we get there uh, what I'm talking about there. But we're going to do uh, Chibi Mondays. And I'm going to try to run this out as long as I can. And all it is is uh, whether or not we finish something doesn't matter uh, at least we're working on something and the main reason for that is, is more prints here and, and I'll, I'll bring up this window in a second but uh, for the art friends that are here what we're going to be doing is working on this uh, uh, chibi joker and chibi donatello uh, and uh, the the gloomhaven thing showed me one thing and I'll, I'll bring them up in a second is that people are very interested in combo packs <laughs> so I'm going to see if I can do something on uh, morning Dennis how are you I'm going to see if I can do something about uh, maybe offering so I don't know how Etsy works this way, um, and this is just more me trying to figure it out, of like, you know, you buy this Etsy thing, uh, and let's say it was, I don't know, $20, $30 or something like that, and you could pick X prints that you wanted, and I'm not quite sure how that works, but uh, for the Donatello one anyway, Ninja Turtles, there's four, right, um, and there needs to be all three, I feel like, in the Gloomhaven one, I was putting them out there, and they were slowly coming out, and I'm... I'm considering just waiting until all four are done until they all go online that way you don't feel cheated if you're like oh, i really want Raphael, but you're you you have to get it while the whole pack is out so i'm gonna try to figure that out but anyway we got this one and uh the joker another art thing i guess we'll talk about real quick too is that these were done uh differently than how i've normally been doing them this is on the ipad pro and um what's what's quick and easy about that is i feel like it works really well with these chibi pinups so i'm going to keep doing that because these have a casual nature to them I can, you know, sit on the couch or whatever and just start hammering out chibis, no problem. This is, this for me is very easy to do and, and I enjoy it a lot. Um, and, but I don't need to be here at the battle station to kind of get that going. So we're, the roughs have already been done. You guys don't need to worry about war, uh, looking at that. Um, I mean, I guess if I were to break it all the way down so you guys can kind of see what's going on. This is the rough, really gross. It would have been real small. And then blow it up to 8.5 by 11. And uh, let me see if I got a line art layer. You can kind of see, yeah, see, so I just start tightening it up. If you guys watch the Gloomhaven ones, those are the most recent style uh, that I've done. A little different than this one. This one, they, the characters have a little bit more stockiness to them. Um, so I might I might change this a little bit because uh, the Gloomhaven ones, I really enjoyed how they turned out. And the prints came out awesome, too. Um, but anyway, so there's that. We'll do the line art today, inks and color, I'm hoping. Um, since a lot of the hard work's already been done here. And, and the other thing, too, let me just uh, bring up one of the Gloomhaven ones, just, just for context here. Um, if you look at all the detail here, there's a lot going on and a lot of different colors. And that's what makes these ones take so long. Uh, they look really cool when they're done, but, uh, these ones here, as you can see, it's like very simple stuff. So these ones won't take nearly as long. Okay. So we got that. And then, uh, the last little plug here I'll do is, uh, well, there's two. This one is what I was talking about. You go to my Etsy store, there's a bunch of links in the bottom uh, if you're interested in picking up any prints or just checking stuff out. Um, or you go to my website, jonathanrector.com, and up at the top here, there's a shopping cart. You just click that bad boy, take you to the Etsy store, and boom, you can go through here and, and uh, see see all the stuff we got uh, and all that cool stuff. And, and like I said, uh, I've noticed, uh, like, you know, I've got, uh, and this isn't a gloat, this is just to be open with you guys too, because I know there's a lot of people that ask about prints and selling and all that kind of stuff. I'm new to the game. Um, the chibi stuff is just really working for me so far. Uh, we did a Venom one actually uh, last week as well. Uh, you guys didn't get a chance to see that, um, but it was on Instagram. I was just trying to stream on Instagram, uh, and I'll show you guys how that one turned out too. The person bought a uh, art, edition, art edition of the print, uh, and this was a lot of fun to do, man. I, I gotta be honest. I was able to get like this really cool dry brush effect in here uh, with this, not this pen over here. I should have probably taken a picture of that, but this, I actually had a lot of fun with this one. And uh, if I can, I'd like to be able to do more of this stuff too. So there's a lot of things going on. Um, and, and one of the things too, I should say is on Instagram, I'm able to get my phone and just record my table so I can do the traditional stuff. It's so hard to do this now. Um, 
I don't have the setup. The room's uh, a lot different than it used to be. Uh, and I need to get a better, you see I get this little crummy web webcam on here. The resolution's not that very good. Uh, so recording this kind of thing, and I don't do a lot of traditional, but um, it's just more things to think about. Last thing, and then we'll get into the drawing, is again, uh, I'm trying to hammer you guys with this, as you can probably tell. If you're interested, I have a mailing list that you guys can subscribe to. There's a link on the screen you can see. There's also one in the description. Uh, it's a bit.ly link, bit.ly slash jarmail. Uh, you just come in here, pop in your email. Just uh, a uh, um, uh, uh, curated list of all the stuff I've been working on that month or every two months I'll send it out. Just to let you guys know, um, like I said, you might not have seen things that I did on Instagram or other places, and you might be into that. So check it out. The main thing, though, is I would still very much like to get my uh, comic God Slayer. Uh, crowdfunded. Um, and I mean, we're still in the baby steps of that, but I want to start building up a, an organic mailing list through the channels I have before, before going on to like Kickstarter or Indiegogo. And I'm, I'm still not sure where we're going to go with that. Uh, but yeah, jam it in there and uh, be able to stay up to date. Okay. So let's, uh, let's do some artwork. eh? All right. Let's get the battle station all set up here. Okay. Oh, um, also on Patreon too. Last week we, uh, I posted all of my brushes that I like to use when we're doing the comic stuff. Let me uh, just do this bad boy real quick just to show you guys. This is it here, the comics. Does this show up? Let me see. Uh, where are we at? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Um, so right here, this is just like the normal workflow we got, right? We go real big. Sometimes we got different ones. These brushes here, they're just meant for quick silhouette. They're not silhouettes, but like... Um, shapes like if we're doing the chibi stuff right you know you get like a head and then you kind of rough in gesture is really all this one's for uh, i do have a big giant silhouette brush sometimes it's uh, easier to cover a, lar a large space which is like this black shape right then you can go over top and sort of like figure out maybe maybe now it's okay cool we got mega man he's got like his hand coming up here at the blaster cannon all right you get a leg kind of coming up here Maybe this leg's going back here. That kind of deal, right? Um, mechanical pencil. I don't really use this one that often, but sometimes it's nice to be able to have a pencil. This Micron that I use, uh, it's very similar to the brushes that I would normally use, but there's a little bit of, if you go quick, do you guys see the difference here? It gets like a little thick at the ends. I use that for rendering. And then we got our line art that we'll be using today as well. Um, this one here, is the uh, dry brush, and if you set your um, layers to monochrome, it, and you just lightly, lightly, not heavy, just lightly pet, I would say, the screen, you get like a really cool uh, dry brush effect. And this is where I would go ahead and add the micron kind of thing and do the rendering. This kind of look there. And uh, yeah, there's a whole bunch of other stuff here too. Where are we at? The, the smooth watercolor, a lot of people ask me about for that. This, by the way, um, you can get standard with Clip Studio. It's in your um, watercolor brushes. And yeah, that's about it. All right, so let's go into our chibi line art. There we go. I'm gonna keep this open because we're gonna have to pull some stuff from there. But all right, let's get the line art going. The chibi stuff that I've been using, it's like, look out, look at the lag on that. It's just to make the lines a little bit smoother. I find a lot of these guys, they, uh, they look a lot better when they have smoother lines. I don't know if it's just the cartoon nature of uh, the chibis or what. But anyway, how's your guys' weekend going on? What have you guys been working on? I've been trying to think, uh, as of late, and uh, I, I say this in a in a grateful way, is um, I've been fortunate enough to get uh, you know some commission work and some project work for people, and it's uh, the only negative, <laughs> and I, and I feel a little weird saying it like this because it's not I'm, I'm grateful for it because i even asked on twitter today too and if you're watching too if you need a, an artist for um a project you're working on a comic book or you need some design work or something like that hit me up 
on Twitter or on here, wherever you are. We could talk, see if we're working together. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm getting a lot of projects on the side, which is awesome. You know, I got a lot of time now, <laughs> a lot of free time uh, during the week to work. Um, but what I'm noticing is, uh, you know, I got God Slayer I'd like to work on too. And what's happening is um, money is fueling a lot of the direction and where I, what I'm picking and choosing to do, which is which is fine. It's not a, I don't mean that in a negative way, like I said earlier. But uh, just made me realize it didn't. It doesn't matter if uh, I'm working for myself here or if I got, uh, you know, working a day job. Making that comic book on the side. It takes a lot of time. And I'm not able to do it so far anyway. Um, during the day. Because I'm trying to make sure we got uh, some some money coming in for the family and all that good stuff, right? Responsibilities. And I'm trying to make uh, Joker's teeth a little bit more... Uh, Janky. Whoops. One second, guys. <laughs> so, uh, what I what I decided to do today is, if you guys remember. Uh, I was showing you guys how I use the Pomodoro technique. It's something I stumbled on way back, many years ago, actually. To try to, not, it's not, it is about uh, keeping focus, but one of the things I liked about it the most was, I don't even know if I have it, if I could do it real quick here, uh, just bear with me. So if you're not familiar with how the Pomodoro technique works, or what a Pomodoro is, I think it's Italian for tomato. Uh, so if you think of four tomatoes, each one representing 25 minutes plus a five minute break, okay? Uh, so all four of these would equal one hour. No, nope, that's a lie. Sorry, two hours. Each one of these is like a half hour really with a break. So after two hours, then you'd get like a, I don't know, 15 to 30 minute break, something like that. And what I used to do is I'd come home from work and let's say I got done at five and I'd eat my dinner do the dishes, clean up real quick. Maybe that got me to 6 p.m. What I would do is I would decide how much do I want to work today. Do I have housework? Do I have like whatever you got to do, right? Uh, errands or whatever. Or maybe you want to play a video game tonight, all those kinds of things. Um, I'd pick a time. So like, let's just say it was 10 p.m. Right? So that what this did is this gave me uh, a chunk of time. So four hours, right? So how many Pomodoros would that be? So you got one hour, two hour, three hour, four hour, just like that. And what I would do is I would go, okay, well, Maybe I want to work on a print, and I'm going to give myself one, two, three, four. So I'm going to work on that print for two hours. This gives me this. Um, maybe I want to do uh, marketing. I know that doesn't sound like anything that's fun, but sometimes it's nice to go online and promote your stuff, right? Maybe I'll spend an hour doing that. And this last hour is like personal. Maybe it's study, that kind of stuff. And what this let me do is it just goes, okay, this is my battle plan for the day, and I can keep going. And why that popped back in my head is because I have um, some client stuff and uh, like I said, I'm getting a little ahead of myself with some of this stuff because I have all this free time now. Um, that The ideas are just constantly going and uh, I just need to make sure that we're staying on track. And the reason I'm bringing that up is, uh, you know, we got this stuff going on that we're going to be working on, the chibi stuff, uh, which I'm really excited to get back into. Um, but I need to make sure that I'm putting in some, uh, mileage for, uh, God Slayer. And I've actually been thinking a little bit more about that project. Uh, initially I was, I've talked to you guys about the comics gate model is the way I call it. I don't, I don't even know if that's really the right way of phrasing what it is. And what that is, is uh, a lot of people, they talk about like this 48, 48 pages is about what they what they recommend, and they I just mean I threw out the question on uh, Twitter, and a lot of the cool cats that are over there, uh, they just reached out and they said you know forty eight pages for this reason and that reason, 
guys are interested, we could talk about why. Uh, and then I just started thinking, I'm like, well, I don't know if that's just a, that's just what's worked for them. And if you consider your, not if you consider, but if you uh, associate, maybe that might not be the way of saying it either. If you try to be a part of the Comics Gate group, Indiegogo might be the way to go, just because of how they've already built that up, that whole community for themselves, which is, you know, good for them. If it's working, it's working. And I don't know if the, the 48 pages is something that, uh, I don't know, it, it's hard to, like I'm struggling to kind of get the words out. I can understand the reasoning for a lot of what there's, what a lot of those cats are saying with the, uh, you know, if you do 48 pages, it gets the, the page count down to enough where as a customer, you feel like you're getting a substantial amount as well as, uh, as the artist or whatever, you, you can actually get that amount of work done so people can get it. And I don't know if that's necessarily my, my problem there. I know I could get the work done. It's not about that. Um, I'm just wondering if that's the avenue to go because one of the cool things I do like about that or the idea of it anyway, is, um, if I was to do, let's say two books a year, you know, start small. So I do God Slayer 1, 48 pages, God Slayer 2, 48 pages. And then you can also do uh, backer things, right? Like if you get enough people backing, then there's a chance you could add more pages and, and all that kind of thing, right? And I'm just sort of in the back of my head, and I think it's more of the longer I wait and the more I keep, the more I'm not working on it and working on other things, that's when the brain kicks in and starts going, yeah, yeah, but what about this and that? There's all these concerns that pop up, right? Um, and that's not good. So, so far right now, we're, we're still sticking at 48 pages. Uh, the plot's already done. Right now, really all it is, is uh, concept design. Because I had the main character drawn, and, and uh, I shared him with you guys, Alessander, the way he looked and all that. But uh, after writing... The current version, uh, his character changed a lot, man. And uh, it feels to me more like superhero esque, which is really cool. One second, how does I how did I do his cape back there? Oh, I got it. So he needs to look the part, and uh, the current design I had for him. Uh, that it doesn't do that. <laughs> he doesn't. He doesn't look that way. He looks more uh, just like a, a vampire slayer. They, like the original idea was riffing off of um, Castlevania, which I got the idea from Corey Lewis, who was. Uh, I'm a big fan of his stuff. And uh, he does a lot of video game related stuff, which is why I really dig a lot of the things he does. But uh, he'll put like his own spin on it. So he had like a, um, what's it called? A Metroid Prime comic. I think it's called Aram. I mean, it's not even Metroid Prime, just Metroid with Samus and stuff. Uh, and it was, I enjoyed it a lot. But one of the cool things that it did for me was it was like, oh, you know what's a really interesting way to sort of get going on an idea? Is uh, taking inspiration from something and then putting a spin on it, right? That's nothing new. So I was doing that. Okay, well, I had, I had a whole idea for uh, Castle Dracula. It was the original book, right? And that's why the main character kind of looks the way he does. Uh, but since then, the story has changed quite a bit. And since I've mixed it with uh, another book that I had called God Slayer, and now that's the, the name of the, the book, where I'm pulling in from uh, inspiration from other things, it's it's a different thing now. It's not it's not what it was when it first started. So, yeah, there's a lot of a lot of stuff going on with that. And um, so, character design is sort of where that project's at right now.
once we start really moving in on that, then the thumbnails will come in. And then really when the thumbnails are done, then it's just putting in the hard work. The brain work, <laughs> uh, for me, always comes in the form of the thumbnails. That's like the hardest part for the storytelling aspect of it. But the hard work is uh, the thumbnails for me. I was just looking over here. Hey, Raphael, how's it going? Yeah, sorry I haven't still reached out, man. I, I apologize. The weeks, or the weeks, <laughs> last week got away from me. We had some stuff going on here. Um, and I really had to get uh, my, some of those, well, not some, but all those Gloomhaven prints done and work stuff. Uh, so I, I apologize, but I haven't forgotten. We will chit-chat. Uh, and thank you for the comment. Uh, love what you did. Oh, I th <laughs> Thanks, man. I thought I'd wear my hair up today. You like that? Does it look good? I uh, love it. Uh, do we need to see how that arm? Nah, we don't. Nah, we don't need to see it. Now we're going to put a knifey knife in there. Also with this, this uh, Chibi Mondays thing, it's a good way to sort of start the week off, I think. Break off that weekend rest. Draw some nice cartoon shapes and all that. What I'll try to do, um, and you guys will let me know as, as uh, the weeks go on, I hope. And if you don't, then I'll just assume I'm making the right call. But uh, your input would be awesome. If you guys have characters and stuff that you'd uh, like to see me tackle... Always, always leave them in the chat. I, I would really appreciate that. Uh, or the comments below the video. Um, but I'm still trying to wonder if we do the entire process during the, the Chibi Mondays or if we're just going to go... Uh, oops. Make sure. Cool. Or if we're going to... I do what I had today. We have the roughs already done, and then we're gonna just do the artwork. I know the streams they always get a little long, and I know a lot of people don't watch them, which is fine. Because of those that do, um, I know they you guys usually dig the process stuff, so we're gonna try to mix it up as best I can. I'll try to do some recorded uh, ones as well. We'll see. I don't want to like just totally take over everything I'm doing with. Uh, the chibi stuff necessarily. Uh, I want to get some of the other artwork in there too. So we'll see. We we got lots of we got a lot of stuff in the in the hopper. I just don't know if I like these pants. Like that. I think I might bring these down. These cuffs are just too like they're cute, I guess. But boy, oh boy, they're big. Bring his leg up here. Oh, it's a, it does, I think. Uh, oh my. <laughs> That's horrible. Alright, let's get this knife in here. And then we just got to the background and we're pretty much on to inking. That's what I'm saying. Like, these things go super quick. Uh, I should probably put the rest of his... Uh, coat in here. But a lot of these ones, they're not, they don't take that long to do, as you can see. The hardest part, pretty much, like the hardest part for all of the stuff I do, I find is like the thumbnail part. Like the sketch, right? This takes time because there's detail in there that you got to get in there and blah, blah, blah. But comic book characters and like hell even a ninja turtle right like you, i could go in there and do different versions like put a whole bunch of trinkets and stuff on his head somebody asked me about this before and um i forgot to bring this up that they like the colors and stuff that i was using in here and what i was trying to do even with this background is i'm trying to do this like for me uh, i was born in 1982 
uh, and I, I forget when the Turtles came out, but I was relatively young. But there's something that capture that I'm trying to capture with these chibis, Spe- uh, specifically like with the Donatello one, like even the Scoundrel one. This is just more like, you know, it is what it is. But this I'm trying to capture even the the colors in here. I'm gonna try to replicate that too. Of the innocence or the joy, maybe, of when you were younger. At least when I was. So that's what I try to do when I look at this, where it makes me feel happy. Where it makes me feel like back when I was kind of like a kid. You know, just those bright colors, just colorful cartoon stuff. And that's something I, I never try to lose when I'm doing the, the chibi stuff. Just because it makes it so like... Even this, I'm going to push a lot of these colors too. Um, these are just placeholder colors. Like, okay, we're going to put like a light fire and a green. This is just for me to color sample from. Because I've already done the work, I can just do the artwork and then slap that back in there. Um, all right, let's get this little pocket knife in here. Uh, maybe we'll do we'll do something like that. Bring that We can clean some of this up when we uh, get the inking. A little diamond on there, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not too familiar with DC characters. Like everybody knows the Joker, but uh, I don't know the little twerks and tweaks he has. I wonder if um, I know he's always got that flower. Did I put that in here? No way. I'm just wondering if we put like a little flower here or something like that. How'd that look? I don't know if that's even on the right side of them. I just feel like it might be one of those things that's so... Known with the Joker that if you just put it in, it doesn't matter. It'll work. Let's just try it. Something like that. I know we'll get uh, some colors in here. It'll help this pop. Okay. So we got this. Uh, let's get this rock in here. Now before we keep going, I'm just going to uh, close all the lines here. So when we run our action, we can get the contour layer correct. Boom, 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 boom. Okay. Boom. Got the hair. It's like all this stuff. You just want to make sure you're closing all the gaps. I've got a backlog of characters that I can't wait to get to. Another benefit of uh, starting this Chibi Monday thing. One of them that I've wanted to do for a long time is Guts from Berserk. I think that'll be a lot of fun. I gotta do all the Ninja Turtles. <laughs> like, that's the thing. When you decide to do, like, a... I don't know. Like, one of the... And, and it's no secret. Uh, Derek Lofman is somebody I've, I've looked up to for a long time, ever since I saw his stuff online. I met the guy. He's a really cool dude, too. Uh, and I've talked about this before, the way he works, and, and I hope it, I'm not coming across as just swiping his his vibe. That's not what I'm intending to do. Um, inspired from, 100%. Uh, but uh, I've been to conventions, <laughs> a lot of them. And 
there, I always found that there's like uh, three styles of booths. One is it's pr- just the whole point of the booth is to promote a thing. So let's say I had God Slayer and my whole spiel at that uh, show is to pump that book and just try to push it, push it, push it. Another one is uh, me being the artist and just sitting at my booth. And I've done this a lot uh, where it's like I just offer commissions and I'll draw for you. Uh, here's some prints maybe. Uh, and some things I'm doing. It's more like you're going to see the artist. And I and I have a feeling that that works best once you've hit like a certain level. Uh, most likely if you've already done like some sort of work that's gotten established or people know about. And then the other one is just you're just a print artist. You don't even really draw. You make you. It. I think it makes sense to always offer commissions at a show, right? If somebody wants to pay you X bucks to draw, obviously do it. Um, but their whole like thing is filled with uh, prints. And the one thing I liked about Derek is he's got pretty much like every character you could think of. And his style is very simple and quick. And I think that's why he's able to do that. Um, but I, and I'm trying to match, at least that's my goal is to do that. It was at one point. And then, uh, you know, things started slowing down and I was back, you know, working and, and all these kinds of things and different projects to take on. And you kind of can't really get in there. But that's why this stuff takes so uh, little time. And I think, and this is just going for other people too, uh, with the chibi stuff, why it works so well is it's cartoon, so it's there's no demographic for it. Uh, if you can, this might sound whatever, but if you can target females uh, with your art style, you'll notice a massive increase in revenue. Um, a cartoon slash chibi usually ticks that box off. Um, and again, the character variety, I can't imagine... I can't count the amount of shows I've gone to where people would be like, oh, I really like your, uh, let's say, my Ninja Turtle print that I did. Do do you happen to have like a Flash? And they're only looking for a character. And it's very hard to have just like a catalog of everything, right? Uh, So when I see Derek and a few other people uh, that I don't really mention as much as him because he's done it so well, my opinion is that it's, if you can get characters that everybody likes, then you're getting more sales, right? And that's huge. And if you enjoy what you're doing, I think that's even better. That's probably the main reason to be doing what you're doing as opposed to like, like I'm not trying to come at this as like, okay, I'm just doing all these guys because I know it'll make money. That's not what I'm doing. It. I'm doing it because I enjoy it so that when we do go to conventions and stuff, it's almost like a, what's, what's a good way of saying it? It's kind of like a, a way of introducing yourself to people that don't know who you are through a character that they might like. My name's Zelda. Uh, when I was trying to get my Jessup King stuff out there for a year, there's only a, f- a couple shows I went to, and nobody knows who that character is. So my, my goal was to try to entice people to check out what I was doing through characters they might they might and probably know. So that's why we were doing like the Mega Man print. If you get this was like a few years back. There's a Mega Man print. There was a uh, Justice League of America print and a Ninja Turtle one. Am I missing any other ones? I can't remember. I got I have anyway, it doesn't matter. I've got one on my wall, but it's not all of them. And people would come up and we could quickly talk and then I could transition going, "Oh, also check out this thing. Like I know you've never seen this dude, this giant muscle guy with a mustache." But he's my guy, you know, and I've kind of got a book coming out uh, or a uh, web comic that's totally free. Please go check it out if you like it. If you like my art, that's like the, the thing, right? And when you're doing prints, it's your style on a character that they already know. Um, and you can really use that as a marketing tool. And again, it's money comes, I, I don't know, I don't, I don't look at, uh, like, I'm not trying to chase a dollar with this stuff. I'm trying to just use characters and stuff that people already recognize to hopefully get them to check out my stuff because it's so there's there's so much content out there right like to know somebody's independent character unless you've been following that person that's man that's you guys must know how hard that is like that's a huge battle you're going up against that's you know you're you're going up against people's nostalgia and stuff that's a powerful, powerful beast. And I'm definitely in the camp of um, you got to work to make people care. You can't just make and expect. You know, like 
because I made this game or I made this character or this whatever, uh, people should just check it out. Anyway, uh, Raphael, it's been uh, awesome to watch you. It's been amazing. Thanks, brother. Thank you. Yeah, I'm getting, a, I'm getting a little bit better of a hang. A little bit better of a hang. Man, I can't speak. My color work is getting. I'm getting confident with it, with like the choices and the reasons why. I used to for a long time. Just sort of like pick. Oh, okay. So we're gonna pick this color. I think we go over here because blue mixes well with orange. But uh, the biggest thing that I've been doing lately, and at least I'm trying to be aware of and get better at, is uh, saturation. That That's my next thing that I've been tackling. And with the Gloomhaven stuff... Here, you want out, Zelda? With the Gloomhaven stuff, it really uh, highlighted a couple stuff, a couple things that I've been talking about of of that, just of tone. Sorry, I'm gonna shotgun some liquid here. I'm drinking coffee. You guys ever drink coffee and you get like it dries you out? Ah, it tastes amazing, but man, my throat is dry. Uh, but like here, let me show you real quick. So when we were coloring, whoops, coloring her. If you look at this. I'm going to sample here. If you look, can you guys see this? Hey, Scribbles, how's it going? One second, I'll uh, answer your question there. Can you see? Yeah, you can. Okay. So what I'm trying to do is something that I've always seen a lot of people talk about and I've never done because I love saturation. Like, if everything was pure saturation, I just love it. There's something about color that just very, uh, makes you feel alive and like a kid. I don't, I don't necessarily, necessarily like a lot of grays and stuff, and then just a little spike of color. It looks really cool on, like, Magic the Gathering cards and stuff, but especially for what I'm doing here, I like that. I just like color. Uh, probably to a fault with a lot of this stuff. But um, everything in this range right here is where you want to stick. And even over here, like, the more you go over here, the better. That way it lets you really punch color up here, right? And I've always understood that, but I've never really applied it. Like, I would try to think about it, but I would never really kind of go full into it. Uh, so, like, here's an example here with uh, this character. So, you can see she's kind of mid-range here with her skin. Uh, the green, it's, like, almost right in the middle. The yellow, it's kind of getting up there, right? But it's kind of dull. What that lets us do is when we start going boom over here into the greens, they pop. Because I have that range, right? Uh, but the other trick is I always like to go in here and add, like, color balancing layers and stuff. And when you're working in a less saturated tone and palette like this, it gives you more range to play at the end. So I'm still able to get there with effects as opposed to super saturated stuff now. And then when I put the effects on top, sometimes, yes, uh, it does start looking more like, as my brother said it once, and I love it, it was like the whole picture looks like it's on caps lock. It's just blasting me in the face kind of thing. So anyway, so when I turn it on, you see how everything, like, watch, check this out. Now when we go over here, like, now things are getting way more saturated and punchy. I would normally try to get here right off the, off the beginning, off the hop. Uh, but anyway, so this is, like, sort of where it's going. And the other one that I did, um, and this one was actually uh, big for me. Uh, Patreon, was it? No, it was a commission. Uh, where is he? Uh, right here for Gregory. Oops, opened the wrong one. Uh, but this one was a huge learning curve for me too because I was able to apply a lot of the effects that I like uh, and even the color too. Uh, let me turn off all the, the special effects. Right, so here's the flat colors and again I'll go in here. Um, like his skin color, like look how desaturated that is but it doesn't look like that. It looks a little bit more rich. And things feel a little bit more lighter, too. Even this dog. Actually, I think I have, like, a... This isn't correct. Hold on. Okay, now we're getting to the way it was. So this is how, like, look how dark this looks, right? And I know when I start doing blending effects and stuff, things really start punching up here. So this is a color balance just to bring things in. Levels to brighten it up. And I'm able to do that because I'm trying to work in a less saturated way. 
and then I think we just put yeah this is like a blur layer set to screen so when I what I like about this is it gives everything like this nice uh, animation glow you kind of see like it's hard to describe unless you guys can just you just feel it when you see it there um, but what happens is it washes things out so I've started to like really punch back the levels to bring them back down and then then I can start punching up this hue saturation to get what I like that saturation and then I like putting that paper texture over it just I don't know just gives it like a, a rawness but now you see how everything kind of comes back together this was a massive milestone for me in, in a lot of ways because uh, God Slayer and even the way we're inking going forward like if you look this is the way I'm, I've been inking lately with this stuff and uh, one of the worries I always have when we add shadow and things is my coloring style is like cell shading right that's all this is is cell shading and you get I can get concerned real quick with like okay do things do I need to render the coloring more to match the line art and arguably probably you, you could but for me this was a big win just seeing how far something could get pushed and, and what I do like too is this is, was all done in the same style right it's just the the uh, or the same process I should say but the style's different but it's the same does that make sense and that's that's been great for me because it lets me keep building and growing on a very simple workflow and work style. Uh, with results that I'm digging and I'm fortunate that people like it too that's one of the hardest things to do is to do something that you enjoy that other people are like on board with too um, so I've, I've been very lucky with, with that uh, scribbles a uh, question how did you do that uh, silver surface color it looks oddly nostalgic really loved. oh thanks man and uh, I actually don't do that style anymore I made a decision to kind of pull back from there even though this year I, I was saying I was going to work in that style, and the more I was doing it, the more I was like, I, I felt like I was starting to, initially working that way was, um, this might sound cheesy, but feeling like it was breaking free, like I was able to play with shape and color and oddities and weird things and go more into um, Jack Kirby. You know where things don't have to, like, anatomy doesn't need to 100% make sense. It's all about the feeling of it. Um, this one right here, let me bring it up. Silver Surfer. Well, that's not good. Why don't I have the layer? I don't have the, uh, the actual file. Hold on. I'll try to find it in a second, but I'll put it on the screen. And uh, hopefully I can find it and I can show you. It's, I'd say it's rather simple, but uh, this style where it's... Um, I, I really enjoyed it. Um, but again, what ended up happening is the more I was drawing this way, I, I started noticing I was actually putting myself a little bit into a box where everything was starting to feel this... Uh, I, I couldn't get certain things. And I can't really describe it other than that. And uh, I think I already closed whatever I was working on there. But that last picture, that D&D &D picture of that guy with the, the dog behind him, that's... I feel a little bit more... Uh, safe in there, but probably because I've worked in that way. And the one of the main things. No, I don't want anything to eat. Okay. Thanks. Uh, one of the things that I was doing was this stuff here. That you guys are seeing. I've if you've watched this channel or followed me for any period of time, this is like rhythmic. Now I I know this is the process I do thumbnail right into uh, roughs to line art inks color boom done send it out get the next drawing done next drawing done this here I'm learning so this is I, I know instinctively this is going to take six months to a year to get on that same level um, it's possible but I knew that I wanted to keep making content and this was going to be a little bit of a sticking point so as much as I was trying to fit this piece through a hole I knew it was just gonna be more um, work i suppose than just sticking with what i was doing the coloring though by the way it's uh literally the same thing as you've already seen let me try to find it just for you so you can um dig into a bit maybe i have it down here uh, let me see i hope i have it i don't know why i would lose it there we go it's just in the wrong folder <laughs> okay um uh, Raphael, it's all about taking the right time to uh, let the knowledge sink in yeah man Raphael saying when working in advertising, I had to absorb a shit ton of content I wasn't ready to, and it all only sank in a few months later after I quit the job and was doing something complete. <laughs> yeah. That's how it goes. Okay, so here's uh, the roughs. This is how we started. Look at that. 
get that transparency. I put it, I guess, yeah, okay, so I have a uh, perspective grid on here because of the surfboard. There we go, here's the roughs. Let me turn that down so you can kind of see it. Uh, this style, 100%, one of the things that it allowed me to do, and things started to get real super wonky with this, but I did like it, was, my God, look at this. The, I would like ink over top of this, and you'll see me kind of get in here. Like, look, it just goes rough into inks, right? And my inks are very simple too, but it was all expression and feeling, you know, like the pulled back shoulders, that kind of feel. It, I didn't necessarily care if um, what the connecting lines were for proper anatomy. That's not what this style was about. I, and, and I got, I don't want to say flack, like people hated it. Um, well, yes, people hated it. I don't, I didn't care about people's opinions, whether they liked it or not necessarily. It was just more of like, did you feel something when you looked at it besides like, Jesus, this guy can't draw. I don't like... That wasn't, like, I want people to, like, I care if people think I can draw or not. That wasn't what I was trying to do. It was more like, did you feel something when you looked at it? Something different. That's the only thing I was worried about. Uh, I was trying to give them, like, uh, I call it, like, black features, you know, like the bigger nose, the big lips, and stuff like that. There's something about, uh, when I would look at the old Silver Surfer, I forget who, Bushema, Busema, Buchema, Bukema, whatever his name is. The way he would draw it, it was very, like, angular sharp but they always had like the alien eyes right so i was trying to like what else could we like move around like with the shape of the face really extend it out like an alien kind of feel um and i just like drawing black characters with the big nose and the big lips just i don't know there's something about it that's cool <laughs> so i got them in there uh and then the inks let me just turn off some of the layers here so you can see those a little bit better uh turn off all this stuff yeah, so here you go. So here you, go. you can see, like, this is, um, let me turn off the roughs. See? So this is the, the style. Like, look at it. It's very, I don't know, whatever. Uh, and then when we add the shadows, the shadows are what make it pop. And the, really, the shadows are super simple. They're drawn the same how I would normally draw, except I would do, like, this little, like, jaggy stuff up here. Um, I guess we had some speed lines or something. Oh, those are just guides for my Kirby dots. Let me turn those off. And then we get some white just to break it up for some speed. Get the signature on there. And now the color part is what you're what you're interested in. So let's uh, let's take a look at that. Yeah, let me just delete some of these layers. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Uh, okay, so the background, uh, just to show you, uh, I think I just had a flat color, whatever it was, and then I was just working in like a gradient. Right, just to get it in there and then what you can do is you can put a uh, gradient map over top and here I'll show you what that kind of does layer correction layer gradient map what that does is it just takes the tone of an image so you see how now it's black and white in a gradient map if you look up here the darkest color that you have will be this so your blacks will be this and your whites will be this your gray will be somewhere in between here so what this lets you do is you can just work in black and white to get your tone down to feel like what's how sat or not saturated what the tone is of the image and then uh you can go ahead and just color pick um i don't even know which ones i had okay excuse me jessup come on come on one second guys there you go Jojo. close that up um, but anyway, yeah, we ended up going with like this fiery red and then, uh, boom, boom, boom. let me turn the shadow off. So these are the flat colors, right? There's no different here, difference here. So we got the big flat gray and then I just went in there and normally I don't do highlights like this, but for the silver surfer, I felt like he's metal. You kind of have to. So just where's the light source coming from, from the right, boom, just flooded in with white. And then this was like the secondary light source, right? Cause it's metal. So the background's kind of giving him a yellow look. I don't know what layer that is. And then this is how I always do all my shadows, right? It's just like a purple or we'll pick a color. Set to multiply. That's all it is. And that's that's it. And then what we do for the special effects, I call it, is... So this is the colored layer, right? And I'll put a new layer over top of it that's set to screen. So it gets like a little bit of a blur to it. Sometimes I'll adjust the levels. And then I just put my paper texture on it and that's it. Call it a day. That's it. So, again, this is the exact same color workflow as uh, this one and the other ones. And even the same that we're going to be doing with this, too. So, that's why I dig it so much. Is It's very, uh, for me anyway, easy to just stick with it. 
and go. <laughs> and the less we have to think about that kind of stuff, the more we can worry about uh, just getting the artwork done. And that's all I'm trying to do. So anyway, I hope that helped you. Okay, let's get the fire going back here. What I'm going to do too, guys, is uh, for those that don't know or remember or whatever, I like working in batches here, so we're going to get the line arts here for the Joker finished. And then we're going to go right into Donatello. And then come back and do the inks, and then ink Donatello. And then we can get into the coloring. The reason I like working like that is, like right now, my brain, I can just go, okay, all I have to worry about is tight line art. I don't have to worry about how it feels to ink. <laughs> you know, like the pressure sensitivity and stuff that you might need. or the f I don't know about you, you guys, but I get into a rhythm when it comes into inking. Like, it starts a little slow, and then it really ramps up. And it gets a little sloppy too. But if I'm able to just keep going with that, and then come back and worry about uh, inking after we do the line art and all that. It works so much better. And I do my comic pages that way too. I, I can't, I don't like, I'm not a fan of just sitting down going, I can't leave the desk today until I've drawn a whole page. I can't, I can't work that way. Vanderson, welcome. Welcome, welcome. Okay, so I think uh, he's done. What I'm going to do with this too, real quick, before I, I leave it, um, before we get, actually here, let's do this. Let's get it smart here. So I'm going to duplicate my liner. I'll at least get it ready for inking. Inks, we'll turn all that off. Okay, we'll rasterize this. And open these up. Okay, so what was she? Uh, inks, no liner. So her contour is seven. So we're gonna go over here and turn that on to seven. And the background dog's dying back there. It's five. So go here, boom, 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 five. There we go. So now it's set up for inking. I don't have to worry about going in here and uh, actually I don't know if I like that. Yeah, that's fine. All right, so I'm going to just take everything here, and we're just going to merge it all. So now it's one layer. Uh, I've had a couple people, one person in particular messaged me on Instagram about this, so I wanted to just show you guys. If you ever find when you're drawing in Clip Studio uh, where you're still getting white lines, uh, let me show you kind of what I'm talking about here. So let's just say I fill in my background with, with that. Um, actually, it's not going to work, shit. Uh, whoops, one second. Well, here, I'll just show you this. If you're ever finding, like, you have, like, little white lines up here and stuff, uh, or you just want to get rid of the white in your drawing, just go up here to Edit, Convert Brightness to Opacity. So when you click that, it'll literally get rid of all the, the white. So when you fill everything, it's just like that. And it also doubles as, like, if you want to lock the transparency, you can change the line art color. So much simpler to do this in the Clip Studio than Photoshop. It's great. Uh, oh, I guess the other thing we forgot is signature. Where are we going to put it? Let's put it in the rock. Actually, you know what? I, I noticed this with uh, my prints. Is uh, I don't like the date on them. Because some people, they might not buy or they might not be interested in things that are like a year or two years old. <laughs> you know, so we're just going to leave it. Uh, also, I think this is a little bit big. I'm just going to shrink it a little bit. Center to a skimmage. Let's save it. Okay, so that's going to be ready for inking. Let's get into uh, Donatello. This will be super quick too. Uh, Vanderson, I saw your tutorials on your Patreon. Oh, thank you, man. Yeah, thank you for being a Patreon supporter. So I'll ask you, I'll just throw it out there. What feedback could you give me now that you've uh, did a little bit of a dive on there? What could be better? What do you like? And what do you hate? You can be totally brutally honest too, man. 
Because uh, Patreon to me is like a special thing. And I'm not trying to make this sound more romantic than it is, but... Uh, you know, if you're a patron, on anybody's patron, by the way, or Patreon, is that you're, uh, you're, you're supporting somebody, right? It's almost like a magazine, is the way I look at it, way back in the day. You're throwing cash at somebody once a month. Um, and I, I try my best, anyway, to make sure that... Uh, It's like I respect that, and I'm trying, I and I throw it out there too, like, what do you guys want to see, do you like tutorials still, even though I don't really do too many, like, this stuff would kind of be like what I would consider my tutorials have gone to, where it's like, just watch me draw, if you have questions, ask them, um, not the how to draw the leg, that kind of thing, I'm, I'm over that stuff, um, but for patrons, if that's what you guys want, I feel like a, uh, I'm almost compelled to do that. These turtles too, I draw them a lot different than, not a lot, but different than how I would normally, like, do you guys remember this one? Uh, where's Prince? It was 2006? Yeah. Like, do you guys remember this one? Oh man, it's taking a while to load. How big are these files? Yeah, let's just go here. Screw it. You guys remember this? 2016. One second, guys. All right, sorry about that. It sounded like something like smashing my wall, <laughs> but we're good. Anyway, um, so these guys obviously more detail and stuff like that, right? Uh, these ones here, the way I'm trying to draw this one, reminds me a little bit more of like the cartoons that I grew up with. Again, trying to really uh, mimic that feeling I had when I was a kid with this stuff. And I'm hoping other people that check it out if you're around my age anyway, this might be the same feeling you get. I'm wondering though, like, one of the cool things I do like about the modern Ninja Turtles is like this tooth gap they give Donatello. I don't know why. I also like the glasses somebody gave him too, but I think we're going to keep those out. Let's see if I move these eyes down, if they make them feel a little bit more cute. Yeah, they do.
Yeah, that'll work. Uh, okay, I think it depends on the person. To me, more things to show in a didactic way uh, of what you do, how you do, and why you do your lines, volumes, and be better the tutorials about comics are awesome. Uh, thanks, man. So I, I know you kind of described it, but um, maybe I'm just, you know, not that bright. So exactly, are you just more like the, um, maybe I'm wording it wrong, the philosophical reasons why I pick a lion, that kind of stuff? Come on, Dissip. Come on. You coming up here? Come on. Okay, come on. Come on. Here, I'll open this up for you. There you go. Shell in here. No, sorry. Uh, I say it in a practical. Basically, what you do here. Okay. Um. Hmm. I wonder how I could do that then. Like, I do have one-on-one uh, -on -one Hangout sessions that people uh, get with me for on uh, Google Hangouts and stuff through Patreon. But I've been debating for a while now doing, like, a Patreon-only stream. I just don't know what, uh, what, I, like, what that offers for people. Do you know what I'm saying? Because I stream, I stream often enough where if I think if people wanted to uh, ask me something, they could. Maybe if there was something more specific I could do during a stream on uh, Patreon, that might help, you know, to offer something a little different. I suppose probably the, the number one thing I could do to just help people <laughs> is uh, commit to a time that we stream. Like we used to do, you know? Like every Wednesday from 8 to 9 p.m. You guys remember that? The good old days? I think I might have to adjust something here. I like the shape of this arm a lot better. It just feels more cartoony. Oh, just give me one second here. I gotta let uh, Alexander. One second.
Okay, my apologies, guys. Um, uh, t- to me, you don't need to do a Patreon-only stuff. Uh, I'm your patron now because I saw you here, so I think it's nice. That- okay, I th- appreciate that, man. And like I say, I-, I try to get a lot of your guys' feedback because... And I don't want cats to think this. I don't think people that aren't giving me money or patrons or anything like that any less of those people I just try to uh, consider people that are spending a little bit more scratch or spending anything uh, their opinion is super important Um, so I'm always trying to do what I can if I can to make you feel like that dollar or whatever you're spending is worth it. Does that make sense? There's, I'm hoping the there's a, a difference there that uh, that can come across uh, with with what I'm doing. I don't ever want it to feel the other way around. But anyway, um, uh, sorry. One thing I tried to understand by looking at your PSDs, and maybe you could help there. When you finish your colors, how do you do the final touches? Like. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, that's that's a good idea. Um, I could show you on here too if you want. That's not a not a big deal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't think I like that arm. Let me just see something here. See something? I'm not sure about this arm. Yeah, I guess it could work. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, let's go back. I don't know. I'm just trying to think of the overlapping shapes here. Uh. Okay, yeah, uh, well, I could show you the colors now if you guys want. We won't be getting to colors for probably, I would say, half hour to an hour. So if you want, you can wait. Or if you want to be, uh, if you want it now, just let me know, and I could quickly show you. It's really not that difficult, I don't think. Well, maybe not difficult. There's not that many steps, I don't think. Delta, welcome. You just came here for the cats? <sighs> Or sorry. Oh, you just got here. Okay. <laughs> That's what you said. All right. So this arm, this arm, what are we going to do with this arm? Maybe if we move it down a bit like that. Yeah, I think that's a better way to do it. <clears throat> trying to uh, make sure there's a spot here for the shoulder. Or for the, I don't want to say the anatomy because the chibis, it's not super important. It matters. It always matters. But it's not like night and day. If we put like a little dip in there like that maybe. Alright, let's see how this looks. Erase all that. Yeah, that's better. That's better. Although the last thing, <laughs> this is uh, this is the game right here, my friends. It's all this like little adjustment. So see how like cartoony these fingers are? I really like the way those look. So I'm just gonna try to cartoony these up a bit. This is something too that's been very difficult with this chibi stuff. I feel like I'm kind of uh, getting two different styles lately. Um, ones like with the Gloomhaven ones where they get a little bit more detailed. And then there's, uh, like these ones where there's, it's almost getting in line with how I normally draw. We're getting more shape 
more cuts in the arms and stuff like that. Uh, up to you, you can wait for sure. Okay, just give me a second and I'll, uh, so let me finish the line art for this and then I'll, I'll show you. And in, just so I, I make sure I'm uh, getting your question as best I can, what in particular would you like to see? Would you like to I me mean, to just kind of show you the effects folder that I do, like what I change from the color? Or is there uh, something else in particular? Alright, that looks better. Like a bigger shape. And then we'll go ahead and we'll just put these little lines in here. That big ol' shoulder, or uh, elbow pad. Okay, let's uh, clean some of this up here. Alright, so we're going to turn that layer. No, we want all that on. Okay. Let's talk to myself for a bit here, guys. Pardon me. Layers that on. That one? Okay. Let's go here. Then, is it this one? I got too many layers on right now. There. And we'll turn that off. How's that feel? Yeah, should work. Should work. Yeah, I saw that after the color. You add noise and a lot of other. That's pretty. <laughs> total noob. I will say to the. the the effects part that I do, that's, uh, that's more like personal for style, right? If you want to mimic it or if you want to try doing, uh, attempting kind of like what I'm doing with that stuff, that's cool too. But I would argue that uh, a little self-exploration with art, <laughs> self-exploration with art, um, you'll start to get a little unique voice out of what you're looking for. Some people, they just stop with the, uh, you know, you, you do all your effects when you're doing your colors and stuff. Uh, I don't know. I recommend at least doing one more pass. Because you, you'd be surprised what you could get with just, like, even just adjusting levels. If anything, I would suggest a color balance layer, and I'll show you in a second why. Staff, maybe something like that, maybe something like that. Okay, almost done here. Just make sure all the dots are, or all the lines are closed here. Go around, close, closed. So we can run our action. Close. Okay. I'm hoping this only picks up. Okay, perfect. Let's go there. F9, and we are making this one 7, I believe that's what we did with Joker, so 7, and then since we have him there, we can put on this layer back here, and this one will do 5, oh, whoops, my bad, forgot that I erased some of this stuff, just current layer. go. How's that look? Looks good. I only forgot one important thing here. He needs his strap for his bow. Make 
that. Maybe what we'll do on this one, just to give a little extra detail, because this one feels very cartoony. We'll put like a little bit of some tech. Not tech, but like a little bit of a buckle and stuff. Just to give some interest to this, you know what I mean? go just add a little flavor to it okay we'll save that up and uh i know the roughs like i said we're gonna have this blue shape back there oh i did good job john all right <laughs> and, like, let's just do this we can psh, nice wait what happened there there we go Donatello, he's got to move over a bit. He's not, he's uh, doesn't feel too centered. Just shrink it a bit, something like that. And we're just going to keep that background color in there just to just to see if we can play with it later. Okay, so we're going to go there and we're going to duplicate that layer, call it inks. We're gonna merge everything except that background layer, right? Uh, and again, if you want to get rid of all of your white, just go up to Edit, Convert Brightness to Opacity. Now you'll be able to see right through them, right? But uh, that's ready for inking. Okay, so let's do some inking. We're gonna go with Joker just so I like jumping back and forth just to keep it fresh too, because we've already spent some time with this one. Now we're gonna go back to Joker. It'll be a little bit more of a fresher eye with that. Um. Okay, so we're gonna. Uh, I'm just gonna address the coloring thing here for Vanderson here. She's saying, "Yeah, I saw that after you color, you had noise and all that stuff. I wanted to start by knowing what you do, and then I'll add minus with perfect." Okay, so let's bring up. Um, hmm. I'm not sure if you, you you care about the chibi stuff. I know it's all the same, but uh, here, well, let's do. I guess the D and D one was the easiest one. It's the more recent one that's kind of got that punch that I'm talking about. Okay, so uh, let me turn off all this stuff. Okay, so this here, can you guys see this? I always feel like I'm being cut off, but yeah, I am. Okay, so there's uh, hmm. let me bring this out here. One second. Does that work better for you guys? Yeah, okay, so you can at least read it. All right, so... I'll have a color layer, right? And usually what I'll do is in that color layer, you'll have like this, like just a crap load of layers and stuff. It's just a hot mess, right? But each one of my files is like that. Like even the inking one is loaded up and going to line art. It's look at that. It's all over the place. This workflow again comes from, uh, I really need to have this book out here, but the DC comics guide to digitally drawing comics by Freddie E. Williams. I've talked about it to death. He works in Photoshop. That's where I used to work before coming into Clip Studio. Clip Studio, in my opinion, manages file sizes dramatically better than Photoshop. So each one of these versions, like the roughs, the lines, the inks, the color, in that workflow with Photoshop, I would have a whole new full a file. So this would be, uh, this character is called Rifer. So this would be Rifer lines. And then this one would be Rifer inks. That way you can always go back and you never lose anything. 
arguably I probably should do that at least to some degree because if something happens to this file in particular, I'm screwed. I can't go back to anything. So there is some give and take. But that being said, what I'll do is I'll have that color layer, right? And then I'll just duplicate it. <clears throat> Takes a little bit of time because there's a lot of files in there. And we will open this up, this entire color folder, right? I'll select everything and I'll just merge it together so that it's just one single layer because I don't care about the particulars anymore. I've already figured out my flats, my shadow, all that kind of stuff, okay? Hey, Drew, how's it going? Donatello's your favorite turtle? <laughs> I wanted to start with Donatello because a lot I a lot of people that I know, Donatello is their favorite. And I feel like he's not really like, Raphael's always up there, Leonardo, like I'm a Leonardo guy, Michelangelo and stuff. Donatello, I think there's a lot of Donatello fans. But he just doesn't get too much love. Hey, Great Now, how's it going, brother? It's so weird calling people by their uh, handles. Okay, so we'll have this here. Uh, also, what this lets me do is this right here. So I'll duplicate this again, just this flat layer. And the reason for this is this comes from uh, my background at working at the game studio. Doing your best to have something called non-destructive art. I never really understood that concept until I worked there. Let me give you an example of what that means in uh, our line art. So... When we get to this, non-destructive art means nothing's been erased. You can freely move things for the most part. In games, it makes a lot more sense because you might need to adjust um, some of the art assets you've made for a poster. You want to move a character from here to here, that kind of thing, right? With comic books and stuff, you don't really need to necessar necessarily do that because a lot of your work's probably already been done. You've already figured out your composition of that. However... This, the Freddy method here that I was talking about a little earlier, it still benefits in that way. And I just didn't realize that that's what it was called, non-destructive there. Um, so this is why here, right? So if I have the hero and I move, I can still move him. And this is what non-destructive art is. You see, like, see this dog in the background? There's still artwork there. He's being moved around. I can still adjust, right? I could uh, flip him if I wanted to. See what I'm saying? Like... It gives you some play. Now, granted, if you look at the dog, like this is that shape. There's a lot of artwork that would still need to be filled in. And you don't necessarily have to draw every part of every character because you're not going to see everything, right? But non-destructive art is what I'm trying to uh, get you to think about here. So what I do is when I duplicate this this color layer, let's say on this one, I just start messing it up. I start going like, All right, I really want lightness and saturation, man. Look, at that's perfect. That's what I want right there. If I can't go back, I'm, I'm stuck with this, right? This actually looks really cool. <laughs> this reminds me of something from the 90s, man. Just straight tie-dye everywhere. I actually like that a lot. Okay, uh, so that's why I like to duplicate it, so that I can make all my adjustments on something without it being there. So the first thing I like to do is I just take this layer, and I'll go layer, correction layer, color balance. Color balance was something that I saw from... Um, Dave Raposa, I bought one of his tutorials and he talked about this and ever since I found out about it, I've just been using it since. What it does is it harmonizes all of the colors you've picked and turns them into something that works with each other generally. Doesn't always work all the time, but let's just go extreme here, right? So for the shadow, I only really work with shadow and highlights. Sometimes I'll go in the halftone. But my shadow, as you can see, is like a bluish color, so I'll go into the blue and cyan these two right here just to really push that blue and just to show you the extremes right like i could go all the way blue and you see how it's still making everything blue this is what i'm talking about by harmonizing it's bringing things together there so i only go up like a little bit a little adjustment and then the highlights i usually just do the opposite so yellow here and we'll go red something like that now his face really popped up into the oranges so i'm going to just bring it down just a bit so here's on and off right so it's starting to get a little bit more saturation what i'll do is i'll now merge those layers together Sometimes you'll see I'll have color balance layers in my folder because I don't delete them. I always leave them there. I'm just trying to show you a quicker version here. And then I'll uh, duplicate this layer. And I forget, uh, there was a tutorial I saw on YouTube that uh, showed this part. Um, and what I'll do here is I'll go filter blur. Gaussian blur. And I just kind of fiddle around here. I used to go a little bit more extreme. Now I kind of keep it around 30, I think. But yeah. And then we hit this to screen. Now, right away, like, I dig just the way this looks. Like, this has got, like, like to me, this has got, like, the ethereal dream kind of look. Um, but sometimes it can get a little too much. Like, on first glance, I'm always like, wow, that looks really cool. 
Um, and when I turn it off, I'm like, yeah, that's a stale looking. That's got like some magic to it. But anyway, I usually bring this down to about 30, 33 to 40 percent. There's no real number. Just so it's there, but it's subtle. I'm trying to just think of subtlety here, right? So we go there, and then the next couple things I'll do is this is usually when I'll bring in my. Um, here, let me see here. Let me just uh, open up. Where's my paper texture? Hmm. Where is it? This one? Okay. I usually have two paper. I don't know why this one's not here. There's like two layers usually. But I'll just paste this one in here just so you can kind of see it. Yeah, see, sometimes it doesn't matter. Anyway, so I, I put this on here. Now this layer, actually, let me do this the right way. This isn't this isn't the right way. Um, I don't know if I did it in this one or not. There we go. Yeah, there's two layers here. So I'm going to copy those, and we're going to paste it in here. Okay. So as you can tell, when I put that on there, it lightened everything up, and I usually just leave it like that. But lately, what I've been doing now is I'll go level correction, and because it lightened things up, I just darken it a bit. Just so it's getting a little bit more similar to what I was already looking at. Also, I can't really tell right now how this is turning out. I usually duplicate this and put it on my second monitor so I can get like appropriate colors. I'm using an old Cintiq 21UX. This thing is not HD at all, so the colors are very... They're not great. Um, but this is generally what I'm doing. I'm bringing in the shadows a bit, and then I bring up the highlights a little bit more. And then sometimes with the last little punch, I'll just go uh, layer correction, layer hue saturation. And I'll just nudge that up a bit like that. Right? And then there you go. And that would be how I would get to that. And that's how you should see the same folder or the same layers in the PSDs or the Clip Studio files you're downloading on Patreon. They should all be roughly the same. That's it. That's, that's uh, the magic right there. Okay, let me get my layers back here. Let's get into some juicy inks. All right, we're going to start with... Uh, oh, crap, I forgot my signature again on this one. That's the one thing I'm always forgetting on these things. Yeah, we'll put it in there. And we'll rotate it a bit so it doesn't look like I just copied and pasted it. Actually, what about down here? Anyway, so I hope that uh, helped you. But what about the noise? Uh, the noise, that's just a paper texture. That, like I call a paper texture right here. Um, where is it? Layers? Where are they? It's only one layer on this one. So it looks like a noise layer. Uh, it's just... All it is is, like I said, it's a paper texture in here that's set to a blend mode divide, I guess, in this case. Uh, and I've just been using that for, like... Anytime you see this texture, ever since uh, my webcomic Jessup King... That's what I've been using. I just copy and paste it on top. I don't adjust anything on it. Like, I don't go in there and do any blend modes after the fact, or any color or um, opacity, nothing. If uh, What I could recommend, if you want something a little personalized, just do a Google search for uh, paper texture or paper noise or whatever, and uh, you'll find stuff on the online and just open them up in Photoshop or whatever and put them over your artwork and see which ones you like. Maybe fiddle with some. And then once you get it, just leave it and just copy and paste that all the time in all your artwork. That way it's uh, <laughs> it's doing what you want. Does that uh, answer your question there, brother? <sighs> all right, inking time. All right, we're going to go into, I think we do large inking now, don't we? And now we go, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Let me get this over here. Joker. Okay. Look at this. And we've only really get it's like ten o'clock here, so we've got two hours before lunch. These gotta be wrapped up before then. So we're we're just gonna focus. First thing we're gonna do though is we're gonna draw in white. Just to make whenever I run this action that gets like this uh, contour layer. It always softens things because it's going on the outside of shapes. And that doesn't really work well with uh, some things like hair and this knife. We want that to be a sharp point, right? So I just quickly go over with white. 
See, it's all on a, a separate layer, just to sharpen up some of those points. Also, like here, I'm going to erase his leg. the rock in front of it and then on this one I'm just going to kind of draw on white a little bit just to make it look like that leg is on this surface here man I hate my chibi my okay so all of my uh, chibi ink brushes they've all got like smoothing max for the most part just so I can get those nice clean cartoon lines. When I'm doing my own stuff, I like the the jitter in my hand, you know, the tremors that are happening and like all the work is imperfect. It just makes me feel okay with mistakes a little bit more. I hate working with stabilization. It just bothers me so much. So when I'm doing the chibi stuff, it's, it's all turned on. <laughs> so when I want to like quickly make like an adjustment that I would do normally, I got to like multiple taps on there, man. Uh, thank you so much for help. Hey, no problem, man. Thank you. Glad it helped. Alright, so we're gonna get a little crazy town here with, uh, Joker's eyes. <laughs> and for those that are interested, uh, I don't think I said this earlier, these will be available for sale, um, today. Once they are wrapped up here. Actually, let's get rid of this eye. Let's put it more over here. No, no, no. I want him looking at you. Kind of. We're still going to put a lot of effects and stuff, like usual. Like, uh, draw with white over the eyes and things. Does that look cool? All right, guys. If you guys got questions, jam them in. Uh, I'm just going to turn on some music so I can zone in here, make sure we're hitting these things. Uh, and, and I'm hoping you guys can see how quick these are kind of going too. Uh, in case you guys are kind of interested in the process and you guys are, uh, you might want to follow along. And I'm lighting everything pretty much the same, always from the top. There's a dev uh, devil, a daredevil one that we're gonna be working on. Probably next Monday. I'll bring that one up just so you guys can see that one too. Uh, Gloomhaven, Chibi. I think it was just Marvel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, so we got a daredevil one. Lighting and everything's already been kind of done quickly, so we can just move through on these ones. Mysterio, I, I always like this one. This one turned out awesome. So we got that guy. He's a little older. Uh, there's an Iron Man. Sometimes I would do sketches like this since the chibis are so quick to do. So we got a bunch of characters that we can already start moving on.
try this. Yeah, sometimes I don't like adding that little dangly thing in the back of the throat. I don't like it. It's bugging me every time I look over at it. I think it's the whole eye, to be honest. Let's get rid of that. That's better. All right. Actually, let's get rid of the knuckles.
Normally I don't add black, but we're kind of doing it over here with the hair. I think it works pretty well. For those in the chat, I got a question here. Um, uh, for those, I guess, that have backed comics. I don't know if somebody knocked again here. Um, have you guys backed only on Kickstarter? Or have you backed on Indiegogo as well? And if you've never backed anything, which one do you think you would back on more? Because more and more people I ask, if the answer I'm getting is like most people, they've never even heard of Indiegogo. <laughs> and some people say they just go with uh, Kickstarter because they've heard of it before. Take a look here. I think we're good. So we're trying to inks on it off here. Oops. All right. So we'll duplicate that layer. Color. And just select everything. Merge it. And then again. Convert brightness to opacity, get rid of all the white lines. All right. It's Donnie time.
That's a tangent right here. Don't like that. Let's get rid of it. A sneeze. Ugh. Hey Xander, how's it going? Uh, you've only backed one drawing book in Indiegogo, but I've backed 18 on Kicks. <laughs> Art books and sketchbooks and a graphic novel. Hmm. Those numbers don't lie. That's one of the things I've been wondering. I'm like, should, uh, should my release on, if I were to do Kickstarter anyway, be a graphic novel? I know it's going to take longer, but I don't know. I wonder if Kickstarter does better with uh, graphic novels. I think Don Teller's done. Yeah, let's try that. I'm wondering if I know we got like this background which is cool, but I'm starting to wonder if we should include pizza somewhere. Hmm. Maybe pizza instead of rocks? I 
or we just do like a giant pizza. Well, you can't really see it. That yeah, might be the way to go. Let's try something here, my friends. Let's go here. Maybe something like that. I don't know. <laughs> oh, Sky, how are you backed up? Okay. So that's the thing, too, man. I got a question. Is uh, I get that Jake did this, and a lot of people do this with crowdfunding, which is they haven't actually maybe they've done very limited or very super small amount of concept work to sell the pitch to people and go, uh, if you believe in the project, yada, yada, all that good stuff. Um, if I can get the funding, then that means I can take the next 12 months off or whatever it is to make the book and then you'll get it. There's that model. And I think crowdfunding works with that. But then I'm in this other camp that kind of thinks since I'm the one doing everything, uh, it'll take longer for me to do it. Maybe that's the thing is I can make it. Then once it's done, all I got to ask for is people to fund the, the printing of it. And that gets the actual amount of how much it takes to successfully fund the project way dr dramatically down lower. Um, and then that uh, there's an algorithm. I know it's for Indiegogo and I'm assuming it's for Kickstarter too. Once you hit a hundred percent, uh, something about like they all these crowdfunding websites they like that bar being 100% funded asap and if that happens then you get pushed to the front cuz they want you to keep making more and more money because if you make if you sell then that means they get a slice too right so it's a win-win for everybody so let's say it was um i make a book uh, and i only need 2000 bucks for printing that's that seems like a a big a better piece to chew on that could be done as opposed to saying i need 20 grand to get this thing done um, and that's where I'm at. So I, I don't think that Jake Park, I understand why he does it. He's got a huge audience that probably believes in him and he can do all that. Um, for me though, I don't think that makes sense, especially for like a first book. Um, so then the catch 22 becomes like, I I'm with you a graphic novel, you know, it's a nice book that feels boom done as opposed to like 48 pages might, doesn't feel as cool, I guess, you know? Um, but even though it's a nice chunk of stuff, that seems more achievable than than doing the other thing. Do, do you get what I'm I'm trying to trying to say here? Uh, Xander's also saying the project started November 2015, but the books weren't delivered until 2018. He got a lot of uh, he got a lot of stick for that. I think it's best to have the book finished and use Kickstarter for printing. Okay, cool. Yeah, guaranteeing pre-orders. That's where I'm at. And sadly, the graphic novel route is just a lot more pages, right? So depending on how fast you are, it could be how long it is. But that's what I guess I'm kind of wondering. And I think I'm trying to use myself as a model here for it. That like, I personally prefer um, more bang for my buck. Um, so like a graphic novel is still very expensive to, to make. So I personally don't back a lot of them because of that. So that's sort of what I'm wondering. I'm like, I don't know if, uh, I don't know. There's a lot of, you can tell, there's a lot of thinking and thought decision making that's got to get done um, I guess really it just comes down to what what is it that I want to make and then uh, make that thing and then ask for people to get it printed if they're interested in it probably makes more sense but I don't know lots of options out there I'm just cropping out this pizza in the background. Uh, I'm just trying to see if we can get like pizza in here. It's Ninja Turtles, right? It always feels like you gotta have pizza in there somewhere. It's just campy and it's 
I think this plays a little bit more into like the original thing that I'm kind of going for, which is the, the cartoon. And I'll be able to push this artwork, the colors back as well, so that uh, Donatello pops over top of them, right? Because like you do something like this where you just lower the the tone back there. But I also wonder, like maybe we put that in there too. I don't know. I'm gonna have both, and we'll see how it goes. Let's put that down there. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll do something like this here. So let me just get it ready, and then we can finally get into coloring. How much time we got? Okay, we should be good. The color is, uh, the flats are always what takes the longest. All right, so I'm going to merge all my line art here. Get rid of all the white. Got the pizza, and we got that. So we'll worry about that when we get to it. All right, let's go back to Joker here. Hey, Blackman, how's it going? Uh, I agree about having the book finished before starting the Kickstarter. I also believe that the slack comes from delivering late. I'm, in, I'm with you, man. If I promised something, and, uh, you know... The world, uh, being the world, who knows what happened? I, I wasn't playing, al or not playing along, but following along. I don't know what uh, happened. But if it was out of his control, like if he didn't finish drawing the book and had a reason for that, then, you know, that, that's one thing. But uh, again, I, I don't know. I Personally, I'm, I'm in the boat of uh, having the thing done before you start asking people for money unless you're just like the writer or something if you're me in this case where you're doing the whole thing then yeah it should probably be at least a very large amount of it done or maybe uh, another thing to think about would be i just need to actually do these things and make more of them to build up confidence so that when i tell people yeah i haven't even started on this thing yet but this is what i want to do and to do that and this is going into the jake route i'm assuming He's saying, in order to do that, I have to still feed my family, and blah, blah, blah. Everybody wants to hear that. But nobody really cares, right? At the end of the day, that's what everybody's doing. Feed themselves. Get yourself some cool little things, some toys in life. Make sure your family's healthy and all that. That's why you go to work. Uh, but saying you're going to stop taking all that stuff and just focus on your creator-owned thing. Uh, but if you build up that uh, rapport with people, that's probably the best way to do it. Now, if, now if, if in his case he did that and, you know, still didn't draw it on time, I don't know. Again, there's things I, I'm not aware of with this. So, But m my belief anyway, from where I'm coming at, and this is from somebody that hasn't done one yet, um, I would want all of the book done before uh, asking for anything. So that means... The, the cost up front is on me, right, I have to find the time to uh, do it. I saw a Doug Tenaple tweet yesterday, I think it was, that he posted. Uh, I'm a big fan of his. And uh, he was saying, uh, I don't remember the book, Veggie Tales or something. I, I haven't read it. Or maybe that was the job he was working at. Uh, but he was saying, and again, I have no way of confirming this, but Doug seems to pump out a lot of friggin' work. But uh, he was saying... He would do the full-time job. He'd wake up, like, I think it was an hour or I don't know how long, somewhere around there, an hour before work, and pencil a page, and then he'd go to work, and then he'd come home, and then he'd finish inking that page. And he did that for, like, 360 days or something to finish a graphic novel. So, you know, that, to me, that's the cost of what you do in order, and I don't know if he already had that book prepaid for or what. Um, Blackman, if you are asking for money to pay for the production i think you should deliver your book in another a lot of time i agree hey jake how's it going uh just got to do it uh paralysis by analysis doug to Naples would be a good role model yeah oh, okay <laughs> right on man we're in the same boat here i'm with you too i i the, the thing is like i said um i'm when i started this i was asking a lot of questions comic skate guys were very uh, helpful and 48 pages is drilled into my head and i have a lot of reasons to really dig that and i like it and i think to what you're saying when I start going, okay, well, maybe going to a different platform like Kickstarter, graphic novels, are they just seem sexier and juicier, right? Uh, at least they do to me. But um, sticking with that 48 pages, throw it out there, see what happens is probably the better way to go about it. To, to, to uh, what you're saying. Uh, Xander, yeah, the problem with Jake's was during the time of making his, uh, his wife got ill and other life things got in the way. But Okay, that's why I think I should have finished roughly guaranteed. Yeah, yeah, okay, same boat. 
Sounds like we all agree with the same kind of thing. Yeah, it's too bad. That's a thing too, man. Like life, eh? Can't account for it. Imagine uh, being like with uh, the world the way it is right now. Having a book and going like, okay, it's going to be guaranteed this date. Like, you can't. You can't guarantee nothing. I think if you're transparent about it and you're not lying, that's probably the best way to go. Okay, so we've got uh, Joker here. What I'm going to do is, so I had my roughs. I'm going to just sample these colors for the most part. Uh, okay, I'm going to use a program here called Snip and Sketch. It comes default with Windows. Uh, you can just literally drag on your screen and it'll copy. It's almost like a print screen. And I go File, Create from Clipboard. Thank you again, whoever showed me this last time we used this. Uh, and this just lets me have like a little sample over here. It's a quick way to just color sample stuff. And also, I'm just going to quickly go online here. Uh, Joker, DC Comics, just to make sure that uh, I'm not missing anything in particular about uh, that. Maybe I didn't get down in this color sketch I did. Uh, what color is this flower? Yellow? I don't know if yellow is going to work. Red. Pink and red, yeah, I like that. Okay, I got an image over here. We're gonna just shrink down. Cool. And I'll bring this over here. Okay. All right, so did I use white? I did. Okay, so we're not going to use... Actually, here, let's go with uh, this purple. Yeah, okay, perfect. It's not totally... All right, I'm just trying to... Like I said before, the thing that I learned with the Gloomhaven stuff is desaturate a lot of this stuff, then we can push it later. So now that I have this uh, this uh, shape, I don't know what else to call it, uh, it's a clipping mask is what we're going to make next. So make a new layer right here. There's this thing called clip to layer below. This lets us... Uh, draw and you'll never go outside of those lines that's why it's pretty strong I'm just going to fill it in he's mostly purple anyway make a new layer and we're going to go in with this yellow what's this yeah I think what we'll do is we'll just maybe bring it down a little bit and let's fill in all the yellow spots I think that's it for yellow, right? Yeah. Actually, let's put a uh, yellow over here too. Okay. And on to the next color. Green. Gotta have green, right? Yeah, perfect. Uh, maybe we'll just bring it over just a tad, because I know his his hair is pretty much his defining thing, right? Let's go ahead. We'll get there. And this is what I love about not just the chibis, but just uh, color in general I'm still learning there's so much to learn with color but just seeing it and, and this part takes a lot of time this is like a killer man just getting all this grunt work out of the way and then once we get to the shadows it's like it starts after this stage when I start adding the shadows it starts feeling a little bit more like uh, when we were inking and doing line weights and stuff a lot of it starts harmonizing uh, but this initial run here is just a little ugh, just a slog but what I like about it is that you can start to see it coming coming together. Whoops. And you can kind of start feeling like, oh, all right, this is uh, this is becoming a thing here. What I'm going to do here is his uh, bow tie is the same color. It's green. But since I have it so close to his head, I'd, I'm just going to put it in green for now. But I think I'm going to change the, 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 the brightness of the green. Just give me one second to see. We might not even need to. It might be okay. I just don't like how it's so close to the hair. Um, maybe what I will do here is we're just going to fill it in with black. Just to make it so there's no green kind of 
You see what I'm saying? So it's at least there's a, a gap there. Maybe, maybe. Let's try a different green just in case. So go here and we'll make it maybe a little bit more lighter. We'll go this way with it. Not sure. Not sure how I feel about that one. Uh, Jake, I'm struggling with drawing anything. I want to, but I feel just crap. Sorry, man. It's got you in a funk, man. It's got you down in the tubes. Do you have anything to work on, like project-wise or anything, or is it all... Is it all just sketchy stuff? Okay, so his skin obviously is white, but what I'm going to do is we're not going to go white. We're going to go, like, yellow. Maybe bring it over here. It'll still look white. Like, it still is white, but it's not full white. And what this lets us do... It's not full white. What it lets us uh, do, though, is get a little bit of range. Let's put that under there. Gives us some range when we start uh, putting in shadows. And possibly highlights. I don't like adding highlights on skin. Uh, but sometimes, sometimes it works. And I guess this is white too. And white shoes. Okay, so uh, I'm just going to do this real quick. All back here is like a dark purple. I'm actually just, like, w this could be done in the shadows, but I feel like when we get to this, we might be able to add some cool shadows, so I'm just going to sort of put those in shadows for now. Uh, Jake saying, sorry. Uh, I just finished a pinup for World War II plane, and that was the last of perspective projects. Drawing for myself is really hard lately. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, man. Do you have, um, one of the things that helps me, might help you, is, I, I definitely think it's good to have a goal, like something to be working on, uh, whether it's just coming up with ideas for projects down the road or whatever, uh, but sometimes, like, that's stressful, and just noodling, like drawing what you're comfortable at, like, if there's a, a head shape or a, a torso that you like to draw a lot of, or a character, and just drawing that. And uh, the reason why I, I like doing that is sometimes that'll trigger the feel-good response of uh, drawing, and then that'll be what launches me into going, okay, sweet, now I want to draw something. I'm not going to get in the whole uh, thing about, you know, if you're a professional, you got to draw even though you don't feel like it because it is work, All right? Like, whatever. But uh, I'm assuming this is not that case. This is more, you're just sketching the sketch. And you're feeling that's not really working out. Something like that. It's a gross mouth, man. The animated Joker had a light blue bow tie. That might work too. Let me see that. This is the one I'm looking at right now, just so you guys can see it. Is this one? I like the. It's the the flower. That's important here. What was it? Animated Joker. Batman. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I see that. Hmm. It's 
very simple with the animation, eh? All right, we're gonna stick with what I what I have here, um, just because it. The only reason I, I well, maybe maybe we will go with blue. I don't want to say we're not. Maybe we will go with blue. We'll see how it goes. Yeah, yeah no problem, Jake. Like, if it helps, cool. <laughs> There's not much you can do. I find like if you've got art block or whatever the hell, it's so hard to get out of that. I heard the, the best advice personally that I've heard for art block was from. Ryan Otley, and even Mark Silvestri too. I forget the video that I watched with him in it. Is it's just like a like drawing, especially if it's a comic book in their cases, right? Where they they don't have a choice; they have to draw every day anyway. Um, that you have to sit down and draw no matter what. If you're sick, if you're whatever, like nobody cares. You got to get in there and do it anyway. You got to treat it like a job that you don't want to go to, even though it's fun. <laughs> it is still a job. And you gotta sit down and draw. So what sucks about that is we all have like those days where you, everything you're drawing you feel like it's just coming out like straight trash. Uh, but the more you actually keep sitting down to draw, even during those shitty states, it becomes easier over time to just sit down and you you don't feel like the stuff you're putting out is garbage anymore, even though it's not up to par that you might normally like. Does that make sense? As opposed to just, uh, I don't want to say giving up, <laughs> but like just going, you know what, today, not today, let's go do something else. Although some people, to that point, some people, they uh, they flourish with that stuff. Just take a break, go for a walk or something. Uh, yeah, that blue might actually work here for that tie. Good call. Now, finding the right blue. Yeah, there we go. Good job, Xander. Thank you, sir. All right, we're going to get this... Uh, is that all one layer? Of course it is. Shit. I'm gonna put like this fire in the background. What we'll do is we'll um put like an effect on here. What? Oh, I didn't okay. Okay, I was thinking that's good. Here we go. I thought I had put this on a, uh, merged all this together, and I was like, oh no, how am I going to get that fire in the background? So yeah, like I said, I'm going to put like a little bit of a gradient back here. A cellular, a cellular gradient, there we go. Alright. Fire back there. And then, so he's, uh, he's all over the place. We got, what colors we got here? We got green, I'm just looking at the color wheel right now. Green, yellow, right? A lot of warm up here. Even here's kind of, it's all pretty warm, I would say. The tie is about the only thing that's cool. So I'm going to go back over here just to give the rocks a little bit of a gray tone to them. All right. So before we, oops, forgot one thing. Um, all right, so I'm gonna do the flats for Donatello and then we'll go back and we'll do the shadows and then we'll get these wrapped up. Alright, here's an easy way. If all of your line art is like solid like mine is, Clip Studio, you just make like a marquee selection around everything. Go down here to this little thing. Uh, I forget what it's called. It's like transparency or something. And just fill that in. Boom. Done.
flats on this one will be super quick. And what I'm probably going to do too is uh, normally I would do this in shadows, but let's get this back one. It's a different color a little bit. That way when we do add shadows to it, it'll feel a little like it's pushed a little bit more. <clears throat> Use a different brown here. Yeah, I don't like that. It's too close to this. Uh, that better? Yeah, it's better. I think we're gonna put the make the D on his belt just like his mask so it pops a bit. Yeah, I like that. Just give it a little bit more color. And maybe we'll put a little bit of freckles on him. Uh darker, so we'll go to blue. It's just a test here. Maybe. Usually I don't like putting dots on the turtles like this. 
What do you guys think? Kind of gives a little bit of texture. Just to cover up since everything's so uh, solid. Gives a little little interest to it. The green might be a little too light. We'll see when we get there. And then I think we'll also just change his nails a bit. Again, just because there's so much green, this might just make things feel a little bit more, you know? So when we have that background... At least it's kind of there. Uh, let's get that pizza in there too. Just to try it out. Whoops. Maybe. I'm, <laughs> I'm still not sure. Because uh, what we can do is uh, this kind of thing. Maybe we'll put like a red or something. You can just push it back. Uh, if we were to go like that, then we could change the, the line art color. We'll see. We'll just leave it for now. I'll just turn it off. Uh, but it's there as an option. Okay. So he is done. Let's get back to the shadows. Thanks for this. Now for shadows, what I do is I turn off all the layers that have a color to them. That way it just makes it a little easier for me to see. Put it to multiply. I'll just start with like a purple. Is that going to work? Yeah, okay. Quite the tangent with the pepperoni and one dot on the right arm. Oh, this one? Good catch. Actually, we could just erase a bunch of this stuff. Just so it's not buttoned up against there. Thanks, man.
There, it should be better. Thank you, sir.
He thought of doing a how-to clip studio and putting it up for sale on school. Uh, no. <laughs> That's something you think I should do? Like a lot of that teaching kind of stuff I don't really do anymore. Like, if you guys have questions and stuff, I'll, I'll answer them, but like the how-to and all that, I don't really do that anymore. There's a whole bunch of other people that do that stuff. I don't know what I would offer that'd be any different, I guess. Okay, we're almost done with the shadows on this guy. Okay, so what I like to do here, we're going to do the shadows on uh, Donatello too before we start uh, getting into the special, well, the lighting and all that. Uh, I duplicate this. You notice that's like a lot of the things I'll do, I'll duplicate it so I can always go back if I mess it up. And then I'll grab my uh, smooth watercolor. And again, let me close all this. Now I'll leave it open. Uh, what I'm trying to do is just smooth anything that's a core shadow, not a cast shadow. It doesn't have to be everything, but just some things. I find it makes it look a little bit more like uh, a little polish. Uh, hey Marcus, thank you. Uh, you're very quick in your workflow. Maybe that's something no one else offers. Well, thank you. Yeah, maybe. I don't, I don't know how you teach speed though. I don't know. Most of the stuff I just, you know, you guys just pop in here and I'll show you how to do it for free. I don't know what I would offer that would make you want to spend money. Outside of actually making, like, comics or prints and stuff, you know what I mean? Alright. 
Uh, where are we at here? Liar drinking. Okay, so if I turn everything else back on, and we'll probably change the color of the uh, shadow. But yeah. So you see sometimes like here, in his face, the purple can look a little, little wacky. But the shading is where it needs to be. And we're just going to do it to Donatello here. Oops. We'll put this whole arm in shadow. Just carve out some light. something like that.
Uh, you could probably repurpose some of your old videos. Not that you need another project to get in your way of God Slayer. Fin <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, I hear you. I think one of the things that can uh, cloud your momentum is thinking of... Uh, maybe not cloud it in a negative way, but... It's always thinking about how you can make money. Well, not, I don't know how to say this. But like just trying to focus on uh, things that... Just doing things just for money. Like I don't, I don't really enjoy the teaching stuff anymore. Like just making videos on how to do something, unless I think it's something you guys might get some value from. You're like, oh, check out this thing I just found out. You guys might like this kind of thing. And uh, I, I totally understand. Of like, I'm doing stuff too, where I'm asking for client work and stuff. Uh, you know, to make sure I got money coming in and all that. But like personal projects, I guess might be a better way of saying it. Like a personal thing. So. Like, since I don't really enjoy the teaching stuff as much anymore, I would just be doing it for money. And, and I'd rather just be making, asking, you know, people out there, do you guys need artwork done for your project or a comic or something like that? I'd rather do that instead of spending my free time, you know, trying to come up with ways of making money off things I don't really enjoy. Like, even though I'm sure it would help people. I don't know. Does that even make sense? Probably not. <laughs> All right. I think Donatello's done here. Oh, forgot his uh, staff over here. I'll be right back one second. Just got to use the washroom. And then we'll start wrapping these guys up. What time is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we're going to, we'll, we'll, we'll meet the, uh, the deadline here. We'll be good. some texture in that staff there I think also I forgot to color these rocks but uh, maybe I'm gonna I'm not gonna include the pizza I feel like it's it's cool but it's taking too much away it's making it seem like it's competing just like a simple background like that I think probably works a little bit better okay put all the color back in there you go. And you can see, like, the shadow's too dark. We'll be changing a lot of that there. Okay, just give me one second, my friends.
All right. Okay, so I'm just going to have to blow these up off screen here because uh, I need to see how these colors are going to affect stuff. Uh, one last thing. I almost forgot. Here's <laughs> have to have that second or there's like two light sources we put on here so if you look on here she's got let's turn that off go into the color there's like the main light source and we'll be changing a lot of the colors here it's almost like uh, when you when I'm working this way it's like you're just sort of putting in blocks of color and then you're always able to go back and change it so nothing's really final. It's one of the reasons I like drawing in this cell shaded style. You can always adjust as you go. I used to try to do the painted kind of style, and it's just, I don't know, it's not that fun. It looks good. Almost looks like his teeth are like fangs. Okay, and then we will uh, go back here. Actually, I'm just going to do this all while I have the same brush going. Just makes it a little easier. What was the... Add glow. Okay, add glow. I realize I just forgot something here. I forgot to do the uh, watercolor. Let's do that in a second. Uh, let's go here. Okay, let's get that uh, watercolor. There we go. 
Okay, we just got a bounce light, and then we're going to kind of course correct some of these colors here. Because they are a little wild tone. Okay, let's get this bounce light. We'll start here. Okay, and on to Joker. Okay, I think that's it.
Okay, we'll grab white here. Okay, Jessup, you gotta move, buddy. Come on. Okay, buddy, you gotta move. You can't just stay here. I need the room. All right. So this is the gradient we were talking about. I'm just gonna put a little. Normally, don't use a lot of gradients, but sometimes in the backgrounds it helps. Just separate stuff. But I'm wondering, actually. Let me try something here. See if I just erase all the line art back here. Yeah, it looks better. Okay. All right, let me just move this over here. I'm just going to start adjusting. Hey, Hector. Welcome, man. Thank you. All right, Jessup. You want to stay over here, buddy? Come on. I just need this room. That's all. There you go. So we're going to change the hue of the shadow. If we got a red background, blue will probably work better. Yeah, I think blue is the way to go. We'll lighten it up a bit. Alright, so the highlights come from the sky we're going to change them to blue and the bounce light will turn to like a red So you see what I'm saying? Where like if you work in layers like this or in chunks, you get some flexibility. Yep, we're still in Clip Studio, man. A lot of blending going on right here so I think what we're gonna do is the rocks change the color there yeah that might work I think we're just gonna leave it like this and we'll see how the adjustments go. So we'll make a new layer for effects. We're just going to merge everything. Like that. And I'm just going to hop back to Donatello here just to keep sure everything, keep sure, make sure everything's still kind of flowing.
Uh, Jake, Clip Studio versus Photoshop, and why is one better than the other? Um, they're both good for different things. I think uh, whatever you're used to, probably stick with that. But uh, for me, Clip Studio, the way line art and inking works, just feels so much better than Photoshop. At least in my experience with Photoshop. I know there's brushes you can get that'll help mitigate a lot of stuff, but uh, yeah, I just get more uh, better results in Clip Studio personally. And the file sizes are, are much shorter, or some doing, and cost is an issue. I think um, Clip Studio is the way to go. Uh, Hector, I have a question about Clip Studio. I have an XP drawing tablet. When I open Clip Studio, it always appears on my main computer, not the tablet. Even if I drag everything to the tablet, how can I make my clip open on my tablet, not the main? Uh, I th it sounds like you have an issue with uh, what your primary monitor is. Maybe make uh, I don't know. That's weird. Uh, do you turn your tablet on or your screen, whatever that XP thing is you're talking about? Do you turn that on before you open the software? I know sometimes with mine, if uh, I don't turn on my Cintiq and I boot the software up, it'll always go on my second monitor. I think we'll go like that, just to brighten it up. And let's duplicate this. And rename this to Effects. that okay now we get into the fun stuff here all right so we're gonna blur this filter blur gaussian blur the screen yeah sorry dude i'm not i'm not sure that might be something you'll have to ask uh Whatever the manufacturer is for your tablet or Clip Studio, although I've, I've never heard of the one you got. What is it? Uh, what'd you call it? XP Drawing Tablet. Yeah, I don't know what that is. Here, and then we're gonna do. When did I do the color balance? Ah, that's what I did backwards. Okay, duplicate that. I'm gonna go layer, color correction, color balance first. Okay, so my shadows are going into the reds. So we're gonna go into the reds and yellows, and then the highlights will go opposite. So blue and there. Then we're gonna duplicate all that. Duplicate it again. <laughs> Filter blur, Gaussian blur. Now we can blur it a bit. Hit screen. Alright, so things are really starting to. Uh, how do you have. Yeah, create now would probably be a really good guy to question about that stuff. What the hell was I doing? <laughs> Level hue. Last thing we'll do here is <clears throat> sometimes I forget the the uh, the layer order that I do these in. So layer correction, we're gonna just play with the levels a little bit. Just gonna 
adjust my monitor a bit just to see how dark some of these are coming out. And then hue saturation, just bump the hue or the saturation a little bit. I think that'll work. Okay, uh, yeah, so I think that one's done. Jump into Mikey or Mikey Donatello. <laughs> All right, so duplicate this guy. And then we'll do a layer correction layer, hue saturation, or sorry, color balance. So the shadows I went to the blue, so we'll go this way. And the highlights we just go opposite. Actually, the mid-tone, I might try to punch in some more green here. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, we'll go like this. Okay, go filter blur. See how washed this out is, how much, how washed this is, how washed out this is. So, if we just kind of fiddle around with that, I think the saturation's fine. Let's just check it out. Yeah, let's punch it up a bit. Why not? Maybe I'll add like a little gradient to this too background uh, it's a bit darker yeah I don't mind that yeah okay, I think that's it guys And we're able to finish it on time. Cool. All right. Uh, so there we go. Think. Uh, think we're good. <clears throat> Only thing, maybe we'll do this. I don't like doing this too often, but I'm just gonna try it just to see. Let's get a little airbrush here. Blue. Screen. Just to push that stick in the background a little bit there. Again, I don't like doing this too often because, uh, again, what I'm trying to do is keep this moving as fast as possible. So when you start adding blurs and stuff like that, you start adding time. You see what that did to the stick there? If I turn that off, just pushes it back a little bit, but I think it works here. And then uh, if we go back to Joker, let's try adding a little bit of a glow, just for the fire screen. Pick like a red. See, just add a little bit of fire. This stuff gets a little testy when you try to print it because uh, a lot of the stuff that I do off camera is we'll, we'll have to take this into Photoshop and just adjust it to CMYK and a lot of the times the colors they're not <laughs> they don't work so you gotta adjust things sometimes uh, 
Yeah, I think that I think that works. But anyway, okay. Well, I think I'm gonna call it, you guys. Take a look here. Yeah. There we go. Actually, let's do this. Why not? Just for funsies. It's like an acid, right? We're gonna draw a little acid coming out of his uh, little thing. This is gonna be a little harder to to draw. Because everything's so bright, it might be a little hard to see. Yeah, it's just making it more difficult, just clouding it up. Yeah, I don't like that. Okay. Well, that's it, you guys. There you go. Okay, so we got the Joker. Yeah, let me just save it up. And Donatello, Donatello, not Donatello. His straight teeth, yeah, <laughs> very straight. Um, and Donatello all wrapped up. Uh, for those interested, they will be available on uh, my Etsy store today. Uh, so you guys can jam in and make an order if you like. If not, that's cool. Uh, the other ones that we will be working on, and again, uh, for those coming in a little bit late, we're trying to oh, I'm trying to do uh, Chibi Mondays, where all I do on Mondays is work on this. I explained at the uh, beginning of the stream why, uh, so if you want, you can rewind it all the way back there, or if you're catching the tail end here, you can re-listen to why. Um, where was it? So next week, I think we're going to work on, where was it? This Daredevil, possibly this Iron Man as well. We'll see. Uh, but Daredevil's pretty much all the heavy lifting's already done with this one. But um, I'm going to have to really push up uh, the other Ninja Turtles because I know if I just do this and he's sitting there and the other friends aren't, or the other brothers aren't there, uh, people aren't gonna aren't gonna enjoy that. Especially like uh, when we wrapped up the Gloomhaven ones and I offered the combo pack, that thing took off. So that's that's great. So I think a lot of people dig getting the whole thing. Um, but anyway, so we'll worry about that later. Uh, I don't know what we're doing tomorrow if we're streaming. Might be streaming tomorrow. I'm not sure. I have to double check what we're what we're working on. But anyway, thank you guys. Appreciate it. And uh, like usual, keep reading comics, keep making comics, and I will talk to you later.